Hello. Hello, keyboarders. We are doing something special today, where I will be reviewing three things. I'll be reviewing my NCR80, as well as the switches and the keycaps. And the reason I am doing this is this is an entire build for about 130 US dollars. That's case, PCB, switches, and keycaps, and stabilizers. Obviously, you'll need your own cable, but otherwise, that's the general idea. It's a decent budget build, right? So we'll start with the keyboard itself. And the keyboard itself is available in China for $85 and comes in a simple box, but was rather poorly packed. And uh, we'll, we'll get to how once we get into the internals. Now, the case exterior is all plastic. It looks like injection molded ABS, though I see no sprue marks. So like uh, obvious points where, you know, like on the back of a keycap where you see a little nub. I don't see any of that. It's two-tone because it's a throwback to the original NCR. And the general idea is it's a G80, but it's a TKL. Uh, there's some very, very stereotypical G80 elements like the thaw key spacebar, uh, sorry, backspace compared to the other keys. If, if you have ever used a G80, you will know this. So it's very G80-esque. It's got the exaggerated front lip. It's got no print screen, scroll lock, or pause break, because that's where your indicators are. And it's got a little bit of a forehead. Now it's got a badge up here, and this badge is actually metal from what I can tell. Let me get it on camera. There it is, that looks like metal. Looks like uh, looks like it's filled with something, but that is metal. And overall, uh, eh, it's it's all right. Uh, you can tell on camera there are some marks on it. Kind of looks like it's been handled a lot. Now the interesting thing is when I unboxed it, it was already like this. So it's not going to be flawless, but it's an eighty-five dollar kit. So why not? Here on the bottom. We can see that there are some very, very small rubber feet, as well as some flip out feet in case you want to go for a crazy angle. Uh, the quality of these are not fantastic. And realistically, this raises the angle a little bit too much and kind of really messes with the sound by opening up way too much space underneath the keyboard. But otherwise, pretty cool. It's nice to have it as an option. Now we can see the sticker back here. And it's close to the original NCR sticker. I mean, as close as you can get without getting into any major trouble. And here in the back, we can see a single flush USB-C port. Uh, the placement of the port is fantastic because this uses a daughter board, which is great. Now we'll open this up real quick. One thing to note is half of these screws are ferrous. That means magnetic and the other half are not. So these do just fine with a magnetic tip screwdriver. These guys back here do not do so well. So you kind of have to let just gravity do its thing. So I'll open it up and then we'll take a look at the internals. Uh, also to note, the screws do not match and the screws are Phillips head screws. Uh, generally, I do not like Phillips head screws because if you don't use the exact size head, uh, you will strip it. Whereas uh, with something like a hex or a Torx, if you don't have the correct size head, you won't be able to get it in. So I appreciate that kind of security, but I spend the time to make sure that I am using the correct size tip for these particular screws. All right, here we are. Let's flip it over. Let's get the screws out. There we go. Let's bang them out real quick. Perfect. Let's take the top off. There we go. Top is fairly normal. Uh, what is nice is that you can see that there are brass threaded portions for the screws to screw into, which is great. Uh, it means you're not screwing uh, metal directly into plastic and therefore, you know, uh, potentially messing it all up or stripping or whatnot. You can see the windows here for the indicators. Now, uh, the indicators do work, mostly. They're not very bright. So uh, I would recommend if you were to build this to uh, 
make sure your LEDs are a little bit higher than you would think they should be. But fairly simple top. And the bottom here, we can tell that the PCB is screwed directly into the bottom. So this technically makes this a tray mount instead of being a more generic G80 mount, which is held in by clips, uh, also known as the hopes and dreams mount. Uh, now, when this came in the box, this uh, PCB was screwed into the case, but only with one screw. And that's what I was referring to with the poor packing, which means some people, not me, but some people have received this and some diodes had fallen off of the PCB. Now, apparently, this is a very common problem, and I'll show you how I figured that out. All right, so I'm going to remove the screws holding the PCB in. I only screwed in the very top and the very bottom just to try and get a little bit of flex out of it. And honestly, in terms of typing feel, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Again, it's 85 bucks. For 85 bucks, and as somebody that thoroughly enjoys G80s, this is pretty nice. All right, uh, where's the last screw? All right, somewhere down here. I'll find it. Ah, there it is. There we are. Now, eh. all right, we're good. Uh, these are also ferrous, which is good. All right, so we can see here we've got the main board and we've got the daughter board. Let's unplug the daughter board real quick. There we go. And you can see that there are holes in this PCB that are used for alignment. So they line up with this and this. And those are purely to keep it from wobbling around in transport and whatnot. I think we'll do we'll do the case bottom before we take a look at the PCB. Case bottom again has proper metal threads in all of the locations you would want proper metal threads. Uh, there are no threads here because these are simply used for alignment. But uh, the the quality of the mold for the case is pretty darn good. Uh, the daughter board came screwed in by default with two out of the four required screws, and it looks like a very very simple daughter board. Uh, generally, when you look at a daughter board, you tend to see a lot more components. You see the uh, ESD safety circuit, basically. I don't see one here, though. It, I mean, it's likely not on the underside looking at the traces. Uh, there's just two random diodes there. That's pretty much it. So not fantastic, but, you know, it's 85 bucks. Now, going into the PCB, this PCB is uh, QMK compatible. And they say VIA compatible, but it's it's VIA compatible in the way that you need to upload a JSON key map file so VIA can read it. So it's not officially supported, but you can uh, you can reconfigure your keys using VIA if you flash a VIA hex. We can see some flex cuts in here that actually do benefit the board somewhat. Uh, but what I was talking about earlier was the issue with uh, shipping mostly, where some people have had their diodes come off. And apparently this is such a common issue that right here, there are extra diodes. This says extra in Chinese. So apparently it's a very common issue. Uh, instead of you know properly packaging their PCBs safely, they decided to just give you extra diodes, which makes this a hard sell for people that are just getting into the hobby and not super comfortable soldering diodes. I, for one, have incredibly shaky hands, so like it's really rough for me to replace a diode. I can do it, but it, it's just it's a pain in the ass. Otherwise, pretty cool. Uses a uh, uh, a uh, AT Mega 32U4, which is fairly standard on a lot of good PCBs. You've got uh, you've got LED support for pretty much every key, though I just have it on the indicators. And uh, besides that, uh, we see some NCR branding that's uh, printed right here, as well as a physical reset circuit right here, that if you do plan to flash with a non-standard hex, you, uh, you put some tweezers in there and you short it and you're good to go. So that's the PCB. It's not bad. Overall, at 85 bucks, like I said, as a G80 lover, I do thoroughly enjoy this. And... Uh, I hope that it will improve over time, but honestly, at its current price point of, of 85 bucks, that's fantastic. Now on top of the $85 kit, we've got these switches. These are JWIC switches from Taobao, the same place where I got the case, and these are 18 cents each. 
I have not modded these, I have not looped them, I haven't done anything. This is essentially a proof of concept that you can have a solid keyboard for 130 bucks, all inclusive. And these are the JWICs. Let's go into the macro cam. This is the JWIC. Uh, it is a JWK that is priced fairly, in my opinion. And a lot of a lot of people that don't know much about me assume that I just universally hate all JWK switches, but no, my only issue is their price point. Uh, at 18 cents, these are good. They come factory looped, decently factory looped. Uh, the stock springs are not terrible, so these are usable out of the box. And I used mine straight out of the box. Now, uh, JWK or and or Duroc, same people, uh, they specifically came out and said, these are not real JWKs and they're naughty and don't buy them. Uh, but I've seen comparisons uh, where people compared the molds of this to other JWKs and they're a spot on match. So somebody is selling them for cheaper than they should. And I do recommend you pick them up while you still can. Uh, one other issue that I have with JWKs is the switch feet. So the alignment feet that go into the PCB uh, are generally small, but in this case, they are not, which means they mount into a PCB just fine. You see, I clipped it in. I can lift the entire PCB from that one clipped in switch. That means that the feet are of proper size, which is great because other JWKs have tried, like <clears throat> these guys, suffer from the issue of having too small of pins. So yeah, fantastic switch, 18 cents each. Uh, one thing is on the space bar, I do not have a JWK switch. Oh, I just, I just popped my stab out. Nice. I do not have a JWK switch. Let's just clip that right back in. Now I didn't install these stabs myself, so somebody probably did a boo-boo. There we go. But here I have a Gateron Tangerine just because I enjoy having it as a spacebar switch, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with just using another JWK. So it's 81. Yeah, it's uh, 81 switches for this keyboard, uh, as these are not here, otherwise it would be 84. Uh, assuming you use a JWIC spacebar. That is the switches. The switches are fantastic. Now for the stabilizers, these are just uh, a $5 set of uh, cherry clip-in stabs, also from Taobao. Uh, it's $5.31, I believe, for an entire TKL worth, which is fine. Uh, you can get screw-ins or clip-ins at the same price point. So if you prefer your clip-ins, you can get your clip-ins. If you prefer your screw-ins, can, you can get your screw-ins. I personally prefer clip-ins just because it's super easy to install. Uh, this is a PCB mount board, so the, the beauty of it is I can mod my switches without desoldering them. And also, if I have clip-in stabs, then I can remove my stabs without having to fiddle around too much, which I do appreciate. All right, next we will take a look at the key set. Now, out of all of the things here, the key set is the least good, in my opinion. This is a $30 key set of uh, just die sub PBT, which, I mean, it's, it's not terrible. It is beyond usable. It's a pretty cool key set. Uh, it's got weird stuff like shift lock instead of caps lock, which is technically correct if we're talking about more OG keyboards. Uh, the die sub quality is okay for 30 bucks, honestly. Uh, the feeling of the PBT feels pretty good. It's nice, decent, smooth PBT. The sound profile is decent. They're decently thick. They feel good, but my recommendation would be to not buy a $30 Chinese PBT set and instead buy one that's like $20. Now you guys will have to do your own research. I'll give you the links for, for the case. I'll give you the links for the stabs, the switches, as well as this particular key set that I own. But I do recommend you get a $20 set of PBT instead of a $30 set because realistically, I mean, that's a big price difference. That's a 50% difference. And I think you're gonna be able to get a decently similar key set for about 20 bucks on Taobao. So pretty good. Uh, there are some keys that are weirdly colored. You can see this return key is accented. There's a non-accented one, but I, I think this is just a dice up issue. Uh, the legends themselves are okay. Some of them are a little wonky, like that's a little wonky, you know, the, the slash is a little bit too big. It's stuff like that, but does it impact actual usage? No, not at all. In terms of actual usage, the thing feels pretty darn good. But I do recommend you get you know a twenty dollar set instead of a thirty dollar set just just to save that those ten bucks. You can spend those ten bucks on replacement springs, for example, for your switches, or you can spend them on I don't know some lube if you wanna if you wanna lube these. But that is not at all required since 
these JWEGs do come decently factory looped. Now, overall, again, I say as a G80 lover that this is a build I really thoroughly enjoy. And it's very rare when I'll go out and be like, I enjoy all of this. Okay. Is it the best? Is it the best keyboard kit I've ever used? No, of course not. Is it the best keyboard kit at this price point I've ever used? Oh, yes, for sure. Most definitely. Let's seal it back up on video and we'll do uh, we'll do a little typing. But learning how to buy things from Taobao specifically is a skill that every single person in this hobby needs to know. And if you don't know, uh, my community and I have worked together to create a guide for how to buy stuff off Taobao using uh, Superbuy, essentially, as, uh, as a proxy. And uh, the pricing for all of this obviously doesn't include shipping because that depends where you live. But in my case, all inclusive, this was 130 US dollars with decent switches, with decent keycaps. Uh, you could probably find one in you know a colorway that you like a little bit more. I just wanted something nice and simple. Actually, I wanted to order the ASCII uh, key set, but I, they sent me the wrong ones. So I'm not complaining. Let's close this up. But I will put a link in the description for the guide of how to China. So you guys can also grab yourself something like this. And I will put the links to the keyboard case, as well as the switches, the key set, and the stabilizers, which is everything you'll need. Obviously, you, you'll need to solder and whatnot, but I'm going to assume you have an iron and you have solder. If you don't, I do have a soldering guide. You can check it out. A lot of people say it's been really helpful. Uh, but one very important point is I generally do not recommend this for absolute beginners. Uh, if you end up with a unit where, uh, where, for example, you've got some diodes missing, you might have some difficulty getting your diodes back in, essentially using the, uh, the extra diodes to fix it. Maybe you'll be capable. It's not that difficult, but it's not something I would recommend to an absolute beginner. Uh, also, it's not natively VIA compatible, which means you'll need some files in order to make it compatible with VIA. You'll need to flash it which, I mean, it's fairly simple to flash a board, but, you know, some people may be very comfortable with just getting a PCB that already has fully supported VIA on it, which this doesn't. But I think as a package, it's a pretty fantastic keyboard. Now, I'll do just a very short sound test, nothing fancy. It sounds like a G80. Uh, obviously, a sound test is not at all indicative of how a board sounds in real life, but if you've ever heard a G80, this sounds like a G80. And that's it. Uh, normally, normally my my keyboard reviews are a lot more in depth because they're you know they're they're keyboards that went through a large amount of R and D and the finishing really matters and you know you're trying to justify a four or five hundred dollar keyboard. This is an eighty five dollar kit, so I I, I don't want to go too far in depth into it. It's something that I personally really really like and. If you're a G80 lover or you love the style or you just want to try a G80 but in a TKL form factor, this is something I would actually definitely recommend. Anyway, that's pretty much the entire video. If you guys have any questions, need any support, drop your questions in the comments or join the Discord server, which I'll link somewhere, and uh, you can get all the help you're looking for there. Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys soon.